and welcome to the American Rancher. I'm Pam Minnick. The Brangus breed was developed to utilize the superior traits of Angus and Brahmin cattle. The combination results in a breed which unites the traits of two highly successful parent breeds. The Brahmin, through rigorous natural selection, developed disease resistance, overall hardiness, and outstanding maternal instincts. And Angus are known for their superior carcass qualities. Today on The American Rancher, we'll take an in-depth look into the Brangus breed. We'll discuss the advantages of building your cow herd around this base. It's all coming up on The American Rancher, so stay with us. Hey folks, Doak Lambert here. We are here at Town Creek Farm, just east of West Point, Mississippi. Uh, we've been looking at some tremendous bulls today, probably the best set of bulls I've ever seen here at Town Creek Farm. We're gonna sell these bulls on October the 15th at 12 noon, along with uh, about 300 commercial females. There's gonna be 170 bulls, about 300 Town Creek sourced commercial females, and it's certainly an event in October that you won't wanna miss. October the 15th, at the ranch near West Point, Mississippi. Make plans to attend Oak Creek Farm's 49th anniversary Brangus sale offering 140 forage developed bulls as well as a high quality source verified group of commercial replacement heifers. The sale will take place on October 29, 2016 at the Oak Creek Farm sale facility located in Chapel Hill, Texas. Also be sure to attend pre-sale activities on Friday, October 28th to hear presentations from multiple industry leaders while enjoying the sponsored ribeye dinner. For more information on Oak Creek Farms forage proven cattle visit oakcreekfarms.com. Hello, I'm Joe Castler with the Oaks Farms. We'd like to invite you to our sale this October. We're offering 150 big stout Brangus bulls from proven southeastern producers. These two year olds coming twos and yearlings are packed with growth, performance, and carcass. In addition, 65 registered Brangus females sell. See you Halloween weekend. Welcome back to the American Rancher. The Brangus cow has been developed with an emphasis on versatility and problem-free, low input characteristics. She is a cow that acclimates to all types and kinds of environmental conditions and excels in fertility, efficiency, and longevity without compromising growth or carcass attributes. Brangus cows are moderate framed animals that are known for their built-in longevity with outstanding udder quality and excellent milking ability. These high quality long live replacement females with built-in adaptability, hardiness and maternal excellence are the result of breeding through Brangus bulls. We've been in the cattle business since the 40s here, here in Okeechobee. Um, our primary breed is Brangus. In fact, 90 plus percent of our cattle are going to be Brangus sired and we use a lot of Brangus bulls on those cattle. Uh, we're basically in the cow-calf operation as most of the cattle ranches are down in this area. We produce a calf and send that 500 to 600 pound calf in the summer months out to the feedlot states in Texas and Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, a lot of those places. So we're in the cow-calf operation. Um, so we have to have really good cattle, really good females, and we've just always felt that that Brangus female, that three-eighths Brahmin blood is about what you need down here in South Florida. And the Brangus female has just always been the most efficient cow that we've ever had. And we just think she works really good. And her calf goes on into the feedlot and does exceptionally well there. I don't know of any issues that the cattle have going into colder climates. You know, most of ours go in the Texas Panhandle in Oklahoma, but we have sent them on into Colorado and Nebraska before. And the key is we're getting in the, them in there in the summertime. These calves are ready to be shipped in July, August, September. So they're able to get in there and acclimate and put on a little extra fat before the winter gets there. And then they perform very, very well. We, we've not ever had any problems, you know, with the cattle that we've sent further north. We've been in the Brangus business uh, all uh, going on about 17 years. We've had cattle uh, about 40 years, and uh, I was a commercial guy like a lot of the other guys are, and uh, we got acquainted with uh, Joe Rezacek uh, about 16 or 17 years ago and decided we'd try the registered end of it. 
the uh, Brangus cattle are a real good doing type cow. They're uh, really good, as everybody's in the southeastern part of the United States is aware of. They're uh, excellent mothers. Uh, they produce uh, good sized calves, and the commercial guy, that's what he's really interested in, is a bull that'll go out there and give him a good, healthy calf to take and put on the market with a lot of good weight at weaning and the Brangus cattle give a lot of good milk and the heifer end of it uh, we sell commercial heifers off of our place and uh, those heifers if you cross them to keep your heterosis right are going to produce for many 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 years we've got some cattle on this place right now that are 17 years old uh, we weaned uh, <laughs> We, we weaned a calf yesterday off of a 17-year-old cow that weighed 600, a little over 600 pounds. And uh, the longevity is just outstanding. And uh, we started off with some commercial cows and with Angus bulls, and then we got into restored Angus cows, and that didn't last but about a year and a half. And, and then we got heard about the Brangus. They have a little sale over here in Tupelo. I went over and bought a couple of maybe six or seven and started off that way and, and then just fell in love with them. They could tolerate the heat and the cold and they just did much better than the cows we'd had before. And, and saying all that, my wife said, why don't you just get, if you don't have a cow, why don't you have a good cow? So I tried to start doing that and raise better, better cattle. And what's so rewarding about this is, you know, we sell a few bulls and heifers and we've got a good reputation around this part of the country that we have good cattle. And I had a lady call me the other day and she said, oh, I bought a bull from you two years ago. I want another one just like it. And I said, lady, I don't know if I got one just like it. She said, but my daddy told me to come back and get another one from you. I took my calves to the sale barn and they topped the sale. So we, we, that's really re rewarding when people come back and tell you that kind of stuff. When you take the hide off, there's, there's meat under all of them. But actually with the Brangus breed, we have better weaning weights. I mean, they went over 100 pounds more at weaning and the price is really good. But as far as having a Brangus cow, you can survive, you can survive during the worst times, without a doubt. The Brangus breed has been around about 65 plus years now, and it was really a merger of two really good breeds in the Angus breed and the Brahmin. Merge those two good quality attributes of each breed into one super package that fits in any environment in any part of the world you want to put them in. Obviously they excel in the really hot humid areas, but they also excel in those cold environments we might see in the Midwest. They work well on fescue. Uh, they seem to handle that fescue toxicity better than any other breed that I see out there. Um, you know, the breed was developed because they're in a very hot, humid area um, and they were selected for that poleness. They were selected to maintain carcass attributes that we see, all without sacrificing those great maternal instincts that these cattle have. Uh, I think that if you look at the history of our breed, we've gone follow trends just like other breeds have. We've got the cattle too big, we've got them too narrow over time, but I can tell you now these breeds have done a great job. We've moderated these cattle. They still have the same pounds if they're in a more moderate frame. They're wider based. They're more sound on their feet and legs, and we've lost nothing in terms of car uh, carcass attributes, and we certainly haven't lost anything in terms of femininity and the female that we have in these. And as you mentioned earlier, the heterosis is a key component of that because we can take these cattle, put them just about any other breeds you want to get uh, to, and you're going to get pounds on the ground. You're going to get that benefit of heterosis because that two breed cross that we have. Research has shown that the Brangus breed will produce an exceptionally tender product with increased marbling from high quality, high yielding feedlot cattle. The Brangus breed has always been at the forefront in the use of technologies that improve cattlemen's ability to more accurately select cattle that are profit makers in the commercial industry.
I feel like the Brangus breed was the first uh, Boss Indigus influenced breed to really address feedlot issues and carcass issues and, and Brahman derived cattle and they've done an excellent job and they have an awful lot of tools. We use a lot of EPDs to select cattle. Uh, we, we just use an awful lot of different technology. We do AI on some heifers and are doing some experiment there. That way we can use some really, really good bulls artificially breed them to, to some of our heifer calves. But the technology is out there and we pay an awful lot of attention to it. Um, we're careful not to get sucked into something until it's absolutely proven. But uh, selecting cattle, I mean, you just have to put your criteria down and what's important. First and foremost, our first criteria is, is a good female that'll produce here and raise a calf till she's 10 or 12 years old every single year. We require to bring a calf to the pen every year. But then a real close second is what she's, what that steer mate is gonna do in the feedlot. So that's important to us. You have to keep up with technology. You have to use everything available to you or you'll be left behind. Well, here at Ursa Kendall Feed Yard, we deal with a lot of Angus producers and Brangus producers, and, and we're able to monitor the Angus side going through the Brangus side. And what we've really enjoyed with the Brangus cattle is we're able to make them bigger because we don't have as much problem with back fat on them. Uh, the combination between the Boss Indicus and the Angus, we can go larger, uh, we can put some good sized ribeyes out of there. Plus with the Boss Indicus sides, we get better dressing percent. When we're sorting and gridding cattle at, at this feed yard, we're looking, we're selling carcass weights. So per every 1% increase in, in uh, dressing percent is like adding $2 on the live price. And so there, we see a lot of the Brangus cattle yielding 64 and a half to 65 and a half where the plant average today is 63 and a half so it's two to four dollars more just for carcass weight. The quality grade coming up through the Angus we try to watch that side side of it in the Brangus breed um, to get the quality grades out of them. We see a lot of anywhere from 60 to 80 percent choice or higher on them. We have one set of cattle that the customer actually shoots for have as many primes and as he does selects and he's getting it done. The outstanding maternal strengths, feedlot performance, and carcass merit of Brangus are advantageous and these cattle are extremely adaptable in order to work from north, south, east to west. This naturally polled black hide breed was developed to withstand extreme climates and challenging environments. They are hardy, disease and parasite resistant cattle that efficiently produce uniform, predictable calf crops. There's more to come. Keep it right here. Salcoa Valley Farms, a division of the Seminole Tribe of Florida, is proud to announce the increase to their annual bull and female sale November 18th and 19th in Fairmont, Georgia. Offering over 170 registered Brangus females and 200 Brangus bulls loaded with power, performance, and backed by the most extensive feed intake data available in the Brangus breed. Be sure to tune in right here on Superior Productions for the September 1st Cow Country Sale in Okeechobee, Florida, selling over 800 Salicoa Valley Farms sourced commercial females. We know your options for bull power are endless, but do realize there is a difference. Gene Trust genetics not only lead the Brangus breed, they take a backseat to no one in the industry, regardless of breed. With decades of experience in the seed stock business and information backed by the industry's most up-to-date tools, you will clearly see what the Gene Trust difference can do for you. Join us at our two fall sales in November as we offer nearly 500 Brangus and Ultra Black Bulls, 150 registered Brangus females, and 800 commercial Brangus females. Looking for an elite place to market your roping cattle? Would you like to show your stock to potential buyers all across the nation? The leader in livestock marketing is now offering the Superior Horn Cattle Sale on Saturday, September 17th. This will be an excellent opportunity to consign potentials, bread stock, and broken ropers. Broadcast live on Superior Click to Bid. For more information and how to consign your cattle, call today at 800-422-2117 or visit superiorlivestock.com. Welcome back to the American Rancher. The IBBA has been a leader in data collection, as evident by only one of three breeds that currently have 100% of the breed on a total herd reporting or THR system. 
1995, they were the first breed association to publish ultrasound EPDs. In fact, the breed was the first American breed to have a full menu of genomic enhanced EPDs, measuring performance, fertility, and carcass. Yeah, the history of Brangus cattle, I mean, we were the ones that initiated ultrasound genetic evaluation. And that went back to 1995 and 1996, um, where Kansas State did the initial research using Brangus cattle, and therefore that set an industry standard that we should be ultrasounding cattle as yearling. And fortunately, Brangus was including that project, and that really carried our name forward. Uh, luckily, our breeders have taken that wholeheartedly. And they've done a superior job of increasing intramuscular fat or marbling these cattle while we keep maintaining or increasing the ribeye size. Uh, as they've moderated these cattle, they've kept that big ribeye in them, and they'll grade right there along with any other Angus cattle uh, that we see out there. The data that the IBDA collects from the total herd reporting helps tremendously with my bull selection when I go to a sale or when I'm looking for herd sires to AI my cows to. Um, it's an effective tool that I think everybody should should use when uh, selecting which animal they want to use. And as a brainless breeder, I'm very excited about the use of the new genomic enhanced EPDs offered by the IBBA by increasing accuracy on younger cattle. It makes for even better selection tools for the registered breeder as myself, as well as the commercial producer. We utilize that daily to uh, to fine tune our program. Uh, we're also using that data to help, you know, create some commercial in herd EPDs. Uh, try to make our overall cow herd better. We're trying to use the data to help enhance some of the DNA work that's going on now. We can we can uh, sire trace every one of these calves and carry them all the way through the, to the slaughter facility and and tie all that information together. So uh, I'm very excited about the technology of utilizing DNA. We're on the forefront of trying to utilize this stuff and we, we've got a lot more data to collect, but um, it's very exciting and we're doing everything we can to try, to try to provide data to the IBBA so we can utilize it as a tool to, to improve on the DNA and the EPDs of the breed. Oh, in the past 10 years, it is just over and above. It just keeps on getting better every single year. I have more data and more data to choose from so I can select the bulls better so that we can have just the calves that come out of everything around here. They just look like all brothers and sisters born on the same time, same month. It's just a wonderful uniform herd. The bulls are doing really well. I'm only needing to cull three or four a year. Um, I'm not buying as many during the year. We have a good herd established and um, I can be much more selective on my bull picking now, which is nice. Um, but no, they, um, if we're culling them, it's probably because they've been here too long. And it's not because they're not working. Brangus cattle were developed to excel in all environments while being loaded with the convenience traits such as moderate frame, easy fleshing, hair shedding ability, maternal calving ease, poldness, longevity, foraging ability, and perfect udder structure. One of the major reasons that we shifted to Brangus cattle was here in southwest Arkansas we have a lot of fescue and anybody that runs cattle on fescue knows that these cattle can be affected by what's known as fescue toxicity and we have a lot of the toxic variety of fescue on this ranch as do a lot of people in the U.S. that run cattle on fescue and the Brangus cattle with their heat tolerance they can handle the elevated body temp caused by the fescue toxicity. So we used to run straight cattle instead of these cross type cattle. And what we found were the cows were always in the ponds, they were always in the shade, and our weaning weights and our pregnancy rates suffered because those cows just couldn't perform in our environment. When we take these same Brangus cattle and throw them out in the same kind of environment with the same management, our weaning weights jumped by over 100 pounds, our pregnancy rates jumped 15 to 20 percent, we consistently are able to have these cattle produce and raise good quality calves and then do it again next year. And that's, that's what we're in the business of doing. And that's why we've settled in that the Brangus cow just works really well for us. That little bit of ear just really helps with that heat tolerance and that fescue toxicity. We're at an elevation of about uh, 
probably 6,500 feet. I run cattle up to probably 10,000. Uh, in a lot of this country that you can see behind me, these snow-capped mountains, as the snow comes off, I'll move over into that country in uh, July and into August as we kind of get into the hotter, hotter days of summer. And uh, weather, weather, climate here, you're going to look at in the winters, uh, we'll go below zero on a fairly relative regular basis you know December January into February three months uh, then you're gonna see well like last week I was up here when I pushed cattle up here three days ago uh, I was in a short sleeve shirt and we were pushing 80 degrees and again that's that's something that, that is really critical here is because we see these huge temperature swings and again these Brangus influence cattle these Brangus influence cattle uh, just seem to seem to come through it better they, they're just not as uh, receptive to, to that temperature swing it doesn't seem to affect them near as much as you know your straight bred Angus cattle or your straight bred other cattle Obviously longevity means a lot to us because when you take the time to both call your poor performers as well as selectively choose your retention heifers, we put a lot of effort into that. There are a lot of characteristics, genetics, facts and figures that go into our retention heifer program. And when you take that much time and effort to select them, you want them to be long-term mothering cows for you that are consistent year in year out and that's what we've had here at this ranch and we've had it because of the Brangus breed they are just very very reliable cattle there are many avenues to take to get your operation into the Brangus business First and foremost, you can utilize multi-generational registered Brangus genetics by connecting with a registered Brangus breeder Secondly, you can breed your own first-generation Brangus through the use of certified seed stock or upgrade your cattle through the Ultra Black breeding program. Uh, the, the Ultra Black, because uh, the bulls that we sell private treaty here is probably our number one seller. Uh, you know, it's uh, they people's, we're still kind of in the borderline of the country where they need a cleaner sheath and uh, not quite as much ear, and, uh, but we're also get hot enough to where we need some uh, re heat tolerance in it. And the, be and the ultra black bulls have, have met it all the way around. Brangus obviously fits, or more, more suited for what I'll call that hot, humid Gulf Coast, that southeast region of the United States. These cattle slick off, they get really slick during those hot times and don't worry about standing in ponds doing those kind of things. But we take the ultra black side of that, it almost takes that little bit of a nudge to use the Ultra Black to get confidence that Brangus cattle in the end will fit even in cold environments. We see these cattle up in Colorado, up in northern Missouri, and they work fine. Those cattle will hair up when they need to, or if they'll, during the hot heat of the summertime, they'll slick off if they need to. Uh, I think that is one of the beauties of these cattle, that they're so environmentally adapted. I don't care if you're in the southeast, as hot and as humid as you can make it, or they're in the Midwest, uh, Iowa, Colorado where it gets extremely cold throughout parts of those years, those cattle just excel in any environment we put them in. As our nation's ranchers continue to look for resources to help rebuild the nation's cow herd, remember this, the Brangus breed is the most versatile, problem-free American breed of choice for the profit-minded cattlemen. For additional information about Brangus cattle or to find out how to connect with the Brangus breeder, contact the IBBA at their website, gobrangus.com. That's all the time we have today. To find out more about us, visit our website, theamericanrancher.com, or find us on Facebook. I'm Pam Minnick for the entire American Rancher team. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.